Oh, we got rookie fever. We are looking back at last year's rookies. There were so many great rookies. We're going to take a look at their situations. Are they going to be better next year, worse next year, replaced? Who knows? And we have a ginormous, huge, very important announcement, so stay tuned. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, February 16th. We welcome you in to what I think will be a very entertaining, entertaining, entertaining show. Wow. This Three. That's a lot of entertainment. One from each of us. I, I was going to say, I kind of put you on the spot to be entertaining in that scenario, but I think you're up for the task. You've got a, a nice polo on today. Mm, that's you. normally. Yeah, that's the key to entertainment is looking nice. <laughs> you know you know what guy is going to be entertaining <laughs> when, you, when you see the, the guy on the horse. And you've got a polo brand polo. Well, yeah, it's, it is a polo shirt. Oh, man. You're wearing the Coca-Cola of polos. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have a rookie review on today's show. They're still around, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing, Mike? A uh, T-shirt. Yeah. And some kind of zip-up. Yeah. How not many zip-ups do you I – mean, I feel like you are – Not a, enough. You are a zip-up man. I do not have enough zip-ups. Uh, because, like, if you're saying – if you're including my hoodies in there, then I have, I have a decent amount. Yeah, like uh, plus but, minus 15. But, but the – oh, minus – Minus way under that, but the problem is, it's hard to find a good one that zips. Cause like when it's the hoodie, you feel you're pretty committed to it. If you ever want to remove, you're talking about the pullover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you ever remove it, you know the tummy mm -hmm. is coming out. Yeah. Maybe maybe some tip tip of the butt cheeks are coming out. Just like it's it's an awkward <laughs> you got moment a for hair everybody. problem. Didn't yeah, you dude. just have it? We were on a trip, or we were doing some stuff around the Super Bowl. Didn't you have? A shirt you wanted to take off, but you didn't think you could get it off, Jason. Yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did. It was. Um, it was the wrists on this jacket were so tight, and so I'm like, I can't. I don't want to struggle. Like I know I could take it off, obviously, but I know it's going to be a struggle in the process of like right. putting my arm behind me and getting that just like force it. So I was like, I'm wearing this jacket today. <laughs> this ain't coming off. Can you do the uh, go to the restroom, go in the stall, do the jacket switch? then isn't that the oh you could do yeah, that you yeah you ever you ever done that before uh, not yet okay no right, you just good. do the you look around and, and i'm go. clear <laughs> but then but then sometimes the shirt goes all the way over and you're just you're stuck <laughs> you ever just started the process and then just put it right back on <laughs> <Barely>. just <like. laughs> i just i was checking something I yeah. weird, weird my tag was bothering me <laughs> all What's right a, what uh, big old son? <laughs> Well, we've got a rookie review show. Like I said, we're going to break down every uh, every rookie that, that made contributions this year, any high draft capital NFL rookie at each position. And we're, we're going to talk about what we think their futures are about, how consistent they were this year, and what to expect moving forward. And uh, you look, some positions have more players than others, but we'll get into it all. We do have a really big announcement. Oh, it's huge. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to share this with the Foot Clan, to the listenership out there, because it's, it's February 16th. This is hardcore season. This is, you're still with us. The Super Bowl's over. Um, you know, you exhaled, and then you began again. You started the next season. So it is a perfect time to announce that we are, in fact... <laughs> oh, there I am. We are, in <laughs> fact, hiring... Uh, yeah, a, you want to come work with the footballers? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be an on-location, full-time position. You can read the full job description on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com slash careers. But we are looking for a industry-leading social media specialist, somebody that has done it for a long time, has digital marketing experience. And so you can, again, you can go see the entire job description on the website you are underplaying uh the reality of this role we are not we are looking for you 
the one person, the what la- a couple years ago. Yeah. We needed a web guy and we needed something impossible. We we needed someone who was a front end designer uh, who also could do graphic design, who also had some marketing. We, we needed someone that didn't exist. And we said he also needed to be named Andy. Yeah. And we hired someone named Andy who was perfect. We're looking for perfection. If you're out there listening, yeah. you're like, I, I am a social media expert. I have tons of experience with marketing and, and these platforms design. and design. And uh, if you, and you love the show and, and you, you love fantasy. I mean, and you want to move out to Arizona and work. There's only one person that exists on this planet that's right for this job. And I hope you're listening and we need to find you. Please come apply. and apply. Yeah. Uh, the fantasy footballers.com slash careers. That was great, Jason. That is a, a better summation of what we're looking for. And so, um, yeah, I look forward to reviewing the the applicant. And if you're good at social media and you love it and you love the brand and that's the end of the list, don't apply. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. We are we are looking for a, a bit of a jack of all trades. Uh, superstar. Superstar, as Jason said. Five stars. Five stars. Yeah, five-star five star recruit. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, do you have anything to add? No, Jason said everything there. I, I mean, Well, no, I guess if you want to like experience – Brooks's wealth first in person to like to see how he the see what the other side eats lifestyles they, of the rich and they famous dress. Money, 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 money. <laughs> he he literally drives to work in a yacht that is pulled yes he, he it's pulled by a truck but he doesn't want to he just that's crazy we're in Arizona there's no water here there's not Some, a lot of room for that sometimes he will jetpack up to his helicopter right. And then fly home. Yeah. So, you're mean, looking forward to finding this new person, Brooks? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, just somebody else to flaunt in front of? <laughs> That's what I'm all about. <laughs> money, 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 money. All right. So, again, the fantasyfootballers.com slash careers. Excited to find that uh, that one person, as Jason said. A uh, couple other updates. The Ultimate Draft Kit pre-order is available now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Lowest possible price. Chance to win a listener league spot. Check that out. Today we have a quick question from Josh. Josh writes in on Twitter, says, with the tight end position being so top-heavy, what are your thoughts on combining it with a wide receiver position, so like a wide receiver tight end combo, right. uh, in terms of a, changing the league format? Yeah, so this is getting rid of the tight end position and just Correct. basically assimilating those tight ends. You can play them in that slot. And there's two different ways you could do this. You can either just get rid of the tight end position and allow a tight end to be eligible for your wide receiver slot, or you add an additional slot that is, an, you know, if, if you play two wide receivers and a tight end, then you would go and play two wide receivers and a third wide receiver slash tight end spot. If I'm going to do this, if, if, if the question is, do we like this, I would certainly go in that direction, adding another roster spot for depth for difficulty I objectively hate it I do too I'm actually I was I was leading the argument okay, I didn't know where in the direction go. where I definitely prefer to have the horrible tight end position yeah I mean we we make light of it but this is not the kicker world this is not a world where you doing research leads to nothing right like the kicker universe there's so little I mean, I'm not saying that there's not a strategy in, in, in playing a kicker. I know, Kyle, you would get really emotional and maybe walk off set. And Jason would, too, well, just because sure. of boom, yeah. boom. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, k- kickers are, you know, uh, kicker analysis is the most important thing. I think the, the, the issue we have with kickers is that you actually don't do the analysis. Like, yeah, sure. Right. So, you might look up and be like, oh, who's got a higher over under? That's the end of the analysis. We talk about tight ends. We have a whole tight end show. We spend draft season, not we as in the footballers, we as in... Fantasy football players thinking about tight ends. Who am, who do I like? Who's going to break out? There's a lot of love that goes into trying to get it right. And 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 there are players that break out. It's exciting to make those correct calls and be on the front end of it. I mean, it's kind of the same argument. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't make a league that just has six positions and every position's eligible in each one. Right? You could do that too. Combine your running backs and your wide receivers. Put your quarterbacks in there. Like the point of fantasy is making decisions across positional lines and it's also a challenge like if you're going to 
do that. And I'm not saying you can't. If that's what you want to do, do it. If that's what your league wants. But you are going to not be on common ground with the kind of consensus of rankings. Like, we don't put out rankings of... Uh, I mean, I, we have our flex rankings, but we don't really analyze every single week and give you advice on do you start, you know, Garrett Wilson or Travis Kelsey this week in your tight end wide receiver flex. I like the part of the draft where you are you have to make your decisions on how do I build my team? Like, do I do I just go after the whoever the number one guy is at the time? It's been Travis Kelsey for quite some time, but you had the Rob Gronkowski years, you had the Jimmy Graham years. Like, do I am I willing to sacrifice at the top of the draft because I think I can find some some running backs or wide receivers later on in the draft, I believe in my research there. Or you're in the middle rounds, like I I believe, you know, that that Mark Andrews is going to have the breakout this year or or finding the sleeper at the end. I, I think it's fun, and it it's it's fun and easy to make fun of the, the tight end position for fantasy because we all get burned by it so frequently, but I do like the element of strategy, so personally I don't want it to be totally removed. Yeah, I, I think the most important draft aspect when, when you're playing fantasy football is roster construction. It's not – did you pick the right guy? Because there's so many players in, in every round, 12 in every round if you've got 12 teams in your league. But, um, you know, it's it's a matter of how do you want to build? Do you want to go tight end early? Do you want to go tight end late? Those things are, are fun and probably more important than just who you pick. Yeah, and, and we you face that with quarterbacks too, obviously. When, when you know, the onesie positions, when do you go in on a quarterback? Exactly. When do you wait? It's a strategic boost, I think. Uh, what we have done – in it was probably about five years ago now, but we did add an extra flex spot mm -hmm. in one of our leagues just to add a little bit more uh, decision making depth. Uh, those decisions to be a little bit more difficult, and I liked it. I think I've enjoyed it. Yeah, and the and the flex spot having the tight end eligibility that's that's great. You know, it shouldn't just be running back and wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. But don't take away the tight end necessity. Will not be hitting the news drop today, but I do have one piece of news. The Cardinals have finally hired a head coach. The Eagles defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon. And the opinions of this are kind of all over the place. It seems like most of our friends from the Philadelphia area are laughing, saying, ha, 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 good, take him away from our team. They are very, very angry with Mr. Gannon, uh, the defensive coordinator who oversaw the def the elite defense that, in fact, brought them to the Super Bowl. Yeah, a bit short-sighted. You, you you didn't win the game. Totally understand that you that that watching the game and the defense that you had that you like. How did we not get a single quarterback sack against that offensive line? Those are I think that's that's a fair conversation to have. But your team was elite throughout the year. What what was the stat, Andy, about how many sacks well, yeah, over they, the they, season? I think they broke the single season sack record. They had seventy. I mean, they were they were a tremendous defense. Now we'll find out. Is that is that at the hands of Sirianni and company? Is it just the personnel? And and you'll get to see if if uh, Gannon could do anything on his own. But okay, he, yeah, I don't think we're like thrilled here. out here either. First time head coach in Arizona. Our our championship Super Bowl odds are the same as the Houston Texans right now. <laughs> oh baby, plus twenty thousand. That so, that sounds like you got at least just put a five dollar on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, you, no, no, no. I'm not. I, I don't want to burn five dollars. <laughs> if there's one thing we learned in Super Bowl week, and I, you know, we talked to people from all over the country, everyone had the same question about Kyler. It's like it, it was: is he a good quarterback? Is he not? Is, do you have right. a quarterback? That's the question. I do think and that he's a good define, quarterback. And that will define Jonathan Gannon's entire tenure. Yeah, uh, obviously for the purposes of fantasy football and Kyler Murray, we are still currently waiting to see who he's going to bring in as the offensive coordinator. I know there were rumors of the quarterback's coach from the Cleveland Browns. Um, I did have this question uh, pop up in my mind. Would it be insulting for Jonathan Gannon, head coach, to offer Eric Bieniemy the – offensive coordinator under him after Bienemy just destroyed his defense right. in the Super Bowl. Like you won. You want to come work underneath me? That that just seems like that seems backwards. Yeah, I, he won't come here. 
because there are better situations for Eric Bieniemy, mm-hmm. and he's being interviewed by Ron Rivera, uh, I think, as this podcast is being recorded. So there's – as is Greg Roman. Uh, they The uh, commanders interviewed him as well. Shane Steichen? Yeah. Also hired by yeah, the Indianapolis the Colts. Colts. I don't know if we had talked about it. I think it, we yeah, – maybe. Dude. I think it was maybe. on the cusp, know. not official, but – uh, he is, he's their head coach and the Eagles lose their OC and DC. I listened to a, uh, beat reporter from Philadelphia this morning talking up, uh, Gannon. And then the question was asked, if you were starting a franchise, would you rather, uh, would you rather hire for your head coach Gannon or Steichen? And he was like, Oh, definitely Steichen. Ah, man. <laughs> so- <laughs> I was thinking you were going to break some really yeah. impressive oh, news. Man. For I did for the Colts fans. All right, into the rookies we go. Rookie review. I really enjoyed, for those watching on YouTube, I enjoyed that graphic. That was a very nice graphic. That's a nice thing for you to say about Brian's work. Yeah. I just, yeah, compared, do that. compared to the truth graphics. What the, what the guy in the Maybe it's wig? just the contrast. <laughs> All right, looking at the uh, general overview here at the of the rookie class, starting at the quarterback position, kind of breaking down which players were helpful to fantasy managers, which ones had a little bit of impact, and we can talk about their futures, and then these players that ended up in the not relevant category, which there were some that I think we believed would be relevant. I'll Spoiler alert, Sky Moore, and weren't. So it'll be an interesting conversation. There's not a lot of conversation to have at the quarterback position, mm-mm, mm-mm. but let's begin with the uh, – the okay some fantasy impact category because there was nobody in the regular contributor category for rookies in year one. Not surprising. No, not surprising. But Brock Purdy was the one quarterback who you know took over in week fourteen, had a couple of impressive games where if you started him in fantasy you would have been happy, especially week eighteen and for some sure. reason you were playing then. But a couple of top ten weeks. Uh, George Kittle's on record saying our offense operated at its highest since 2019 with Brock Purdy at quarterback and said, I think it's his job to lose. That's crazy for a player to come out and say that. It, it, it's, it says a lot, and that will be impressive to me if Brock Purdy does retain that role over Trey Lance coming into this year off of the elbow uh, surgery. Does it say anything to you about Lance? By not saying anything about Lance, like uh, was there a lack of an impact made from a it doesn't because, leadership perspective in the first two years? No, I think the fact that he missed with injury, it, it's not like he was um, at practice throwing the ball around, running the the other team, and they just weren't impressed. This was no opportunity to see Lance, so I don't see this as a slight on Lance. But that was only this year, right? And Lance was there last year, right? So, like, has he made no impact on this? Well, it, what, that's what I was asking. It's like over two years, is there not a – there's no the, loyalty to Lance, I guess. Well, he, nothing has been built up, and the statement of Kittle saying about the offense, I mean, what what were they averaging over that time? Like something like 35 points or so? I mean, they they were in the 30s every week except for Seattle, and they hit 21. And otherwise, they're in the high 30s. I mean, you can't argue with that. Like the, the team was putting up a huge amount of points. It wasn't – it didn't really turn into – Really, really delicious fantasy action. Uh, but, I mean, he averaged two touchdowns a week, just wasn't giving you huge yardage yeah, or he, anything. He really never – he almost never busted once he was a starter. But sure. his ceiling is not very high. His floor is decently high. To me, this reminds me of a future that looks like it could be very Derek Carr, where you're going to have a lot of stats by the end of the year, probably be an okay – high-end quarterback too if he is the starter but never really win you fantasy championships okay uh and he'll have surgery on the on the 22nd of february and hopefully be back within three to six months ready for training camp or competing for that job for the rest of the of the quarterback class i'm going to uh we're gonna play a game okay okay and here, here's what it's going to be. I want you to pretend that you're investing $100 in each of these players, like a stock, okay? okay? Okay. And then I want you to tell me what you think that $100 will be worth a year from today. Okay. Okay? Yeah. You, you in? All right. Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett did not make contributions that were fantasy relevant this past year. You put $100 in the Kenny Pickett stock. 
and then we're on this show next year, and that hundred dollars is worth what? One hundred and ten dollars. One hundred and ten dollars. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Uh, one hundred and ten bucks. Yep. I was going to say about eighty-five. So you think he's that? That would mean he's probably yeah. not going to be a starter. No, I, no. I in think his future, I'm I'm speaking only fantasy football wise. Like I think that he can be an okay NFL starter. Went six and two over the final eight starts. He just the, and. It was only one year. We do have to remember Trevor Lawrence was terrible, but Trevor Lawrence was also terrible in a terrible situation. I mean, this this was still Mike Tomlin and company uh, in charge, and they went from you know the high fly not high flying, but I should say heavy pass attempt uh, past couple years of Big Ben back to a a more run centric offense with well Kenny Pickett was the quarterback. He can improve. I think he can be an average starter, but I don't see a world where Kenny Pickett is ever anything more than a streaming option. So a bad investment or a low growth investment? Low growth investment, yeah. And uh, never had a single game above 20 fantasy points. If I uh, if I asked you about Desmond Ritter, Falcons quarterback. Possible starter. And uh, I said, yeah, you put 100 bucks in the Desmond Ritter bucket and uh, we come back on the show a year from now, that $100 is worth what? Two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> that is my two fifty. Oh, so two fifty. About two fifty. So not a full in run, but not very far off. Yeah, I can go get a Snickers. I mean, it's not nothing, Mike. But I mean, let's, let's look through the game log here. Final week against Tampa Bay, nineteen for two twenty four and two. He was a top twelve quarterback. I love the inflection in his voice. Week. Uh. You're at 250, Jay? Yeah. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, because you're already at the well, – if Desmond Ritter, you're already in super danger of being replaced this offseason. Yes, the owner, the NFL owner, uh, Mr. Blank, is saying we're excited for Desmond Ritter. I think they'll also be really, really excited if they're on the clock and one of those quarterbacks happens to fall and then they just get – you know, then they draft him, and Kyle, the Ritter is gone. Kyle, as the resident Atlanta Falcons fan, do you have any reply or response to what the, the numbers being put out here? Two fifty—that is mean. That's like—that's <laughs> not was, a lot. Yeah, I mean, he only started the final games, but I, I think, would say I—I I think it'll be worth like thirty-five bucks. I'd say like fifty-five, but on, but on the way 55? out. Okay. So you—you you don't think he's getting replaced in the draft? Not at pick eight. They need to move up. I, the reason I say two dollars and fifty cents is because I believe going into the twenty twenty four season, he will not be a starting quarterback. So it's worth it's almost worthless. And so Malik Willis is worth what? <sighs> Man, I so I've I'm just not a believer that he's gonna ever be able to do it. Can I, you like? Would you rather have Willis or Ritter in a dynasty league? For fantasy purposes, Ritter. I'd rather have. I'd rather have Ritter. I'd rather have Willis for the potential of Willis got Willis. rushing. What what was what was our guy's name who for the Titans who played that last week? He got oh, replaced. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He got replaced in the I, final oh, week. Oh my gosh, that's a good example. Josh you, Dobbs. Yeah, yeah we Dobbs. couldn't okay. remember okay. the name of the quarterback. But, but the, yeah, the point being, Josh Dobbs not on the team. Yeah, they bring him in to fight for a playoff. I'm spot, on the Ritter side, and then. they're like, like I I think we've seen. Malik could get better, but it just I that seems pretty far fetched. Yeah, I'm 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 with you there. Okay. All right. We'll take a quick break, come back with the running backs. Much more well, exciting position to talk about. You can't yet because oh. how, 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 how. You want to talk about Sam Howell. Five hundred dollar return. <laughs> We're going to the moon like Dogecoin here with Sam Howell. That's what you believe? No. But, but it's fun to say what I want to happen. <laughs> yes, I do think that Sam Howell. Um, Will he start game week one? Percentage chance he starts week one for the Commanders. Percentage chance I would put at forty percent. I think it's pretty high. I go fifty. I, I think that's a pretty high number. If he starts, I believe he will have more success than Desmond Ritter. More success than Matt Corral. And if he has success, what kind of sounds would you make? <laughs> Okay. All right. Are we allowed to move on now? Yes. All right. Time to talk about the running back position. There were uh there were three running backs 
that fit the bill in terms of having a uh, – that we ca- classified as good. Yeah. They made contributions significantly to the fantasy football world. The first one that we'll talk about is Brees Lightning. Yeah, baby. Brees Hall, who – uh, was really, really good through week seven before the ACL and meniscus injury missed the final 10 weeks of the year. Uh, will be undergoing, uh, you know, uh, recovering from that injury throughout the off season. You know, our, our injury expert, Matthew Betts, he talked about the kind of future he sees for Brees. And, um, you know, we kind of said he was more bullish on him in 2024 than 2023 this upcoming year. Uh, cause you, you, you're recovering from a serious injury. And I think there's question one, which is how recovered are you? And then there's question two, which is like, no matter how recovered you are, how does the team treat that? Does the treat, does the team handle that with kid gloves? Do, do you have other options? Do you not? And you know, this is the team in New York that seems at the tippy top of the list for Aaron Rodgers and, or Derek Carr. There's a lot of talk about, Carr being the backup if they can't get Rodgers in terms of an option this offseason, and they view him as a massive up- upgrade on Zach Wilson, which of course he is. So Brees Hall, off the injury, uh, you know, while he played, he was 86% of the time he was uh, considered good by our metrics, 14% great, 14% bust. It was, by all accounts, a successful debut, yep. fourth most consistent running back. Just the injury. That was all it was. He averaged 5.8 yards per carry. The identity of the team was going to be Brees Hall. You couldn't have asked for anything more uh, out of Brees Hall. The, the the seven games he played, just unbelievable. He was fantastic. Like you said, he was our consistency, true score, number four running back. He was as good as it gets in his rookie year. Obviously, the question is, how will he come back from the ACL injury? Last episode, we were on a mailbag talking about like who – you know, are you all in for? And I'm saying I don't care about the ACL injury. I think he comes back strong. After that, Mr. Matthew Betts had words for me. Ooh. Okay, so we went back and forth. He the, has a the teacher said, "See me after class." Yes, teacher said, "See me <laughs> after class." Um, we we went back and forth. I did a bunch of uh, more research on this specific injury in conjunction with a great article that Betts wrote: the impact of ACL surgeries on fantasy performance for running backs it's exactly what you want and what he found in his data which is very compelling is that year one they are less efficient than they were prior to the injury year two they are fine and great and we've seen this a lot the most similar injury to Brees Hall is Saquon Barkley he had the same exact thing where it was an ACL plus a meniscus no other knee damage but not just the ACL by itself we saw Saquon come back last season, the season before this one that just finished, and he was disappointing, and then he was awesome in year two this past season. So I think that there's... He was kind of on his way. Uh, so like the, the Saquon Barkley year, I mean, it, you always want to find a comp, so I don't blame you. It's, it's difficult to gauge what he was doing because the first two weeks were rough, and then weeks three and four of that season, running back 10 running back three, and then the ankle, and then injury. The ankle injury, and he, the, the season just derailed from there. I, yeah, and, and still, he did. Still low efficiency in those four games, though, as to speak to Betts and Jason's point. Yep, and uh, to be fair to uh, what Saquon went through, he got injured the year prior in week two versus week seven, so a little sure. bit more time for recovery. That being said, if you look at the entire list of running backs who have had the ACL and then are coming back, there are only a few of these guys that are actually young, highly drafted prospects. Jamal Charles had it happen, his first ACL. Uh, Todd Gurley had one in college. You have um, a few. Dalvin Cook had one very, very early on. Right. And those players who were exceptionally young. Did very well. They did very well in year one. 1,700 yards for Jamal Charles after his ACL. So I am Which still is, in on Brees Hall year one removed. But he'll be even better year two. Yeah, I guess that, that, that it's such an interesting dilemma because for somebody who uh, I think might be in love with Brees Hall. Yeah, a little, be, that, little bias. That would be you. I am curious. Take when, lock. I, I am curious <laughs> what you'll be able to pass on or wh- whether you'll be able to pass on him for somebody in year this first year removed from the ACL. Like, I'm wondering if you're in the draft and you're staring down the Josh Jacobs situation or ETN. Like, is Brees just going to surpass that category of running back 
I mean, I, I know we don't know everything, but it's fun to ask the questions sure. this early. Yeah, it's it's certainly fun. I mean, I, I was in a draft recently that's already going. I took Brees Hall. Or, or Kenneth Walker, who we're about to talk about. Kenneth Walker was off the board, but I did take Brees Hall at the 2-3 turn ahead of ETN, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, Pollard. So I, I, I put my money where my mouth was. Well, and a lot of folks are doing that. The RB8 off the board right now in best ball drafts. Kenneth Walker. Second round draft pick, played 15 games, 228 for over 1,009. Uh, really took off in week five, 47% good, 13% great, 27% bust. Um, thoughts on Kenneth Walker? He was a big contributor for fantasy players. He he will be interesting because like, I he's he's a fantastic running back. He he is a home run running back where you're which Saquon's kind of in that as well where you're basically getting zero to negative yards or you're getting a huge run and that that kind of happened pretty frequently throughout the throughout his his rookie season that didn't stop him from being great for for fantasy purposes like you said he took over essentially in week 5 that's when the the Rashad Penny injury happened i believe and ended up as running back 16 still on at the end of the season. He we had hoped that he would catch more passes and like that's the difference between Walker and Brees is we already know that the Jets are willing to heavily feature Brees Hall in the passing game should uh Zach Wilson not be the quarterback. But the the identity of the Seahawks it's almost like did they find another Marshawn Lynch type where they can just they can go back grind it out and then hit the big plays over the top with, with to to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. So I I like him a lot, but uh he will certainly come with a a with more risk than some of those other guys cuz he doesn't have the he, like he's not catching 50 passes. That's probably 17 15 plus yard runs. Third most among running backs. Yes, yeah, you get the, but then whatever his numbers are on the g gaining like zero yards. I think he's near the bottom of that list too. Is that a team, Jason, in Seattle where you think there will be a tremendous amount of stability compared of what we saw last year? It seems that way on the surface. Like we expect Geno to potentially be back. Same wide receiver room. They drafted so well last year. Seems like they may be more predictable than some of these other scenarios. I certainly think so. I mean, a curveball could be thrown here where, you know, well, they surprisingly draft, you know, a – a quarterback that falls to them that they're in love with, but it does appear at first glance as of this moment that Gino will be the guy. They had two uh, outstanding rookies on the offensive line who should be better next year. Kenneth Walker is a really, really solid running back whose future looks bright. Uh, my biggest question mark is will they resign Rashad Penny? That's it. Sure. Damian Pierce, fourth round pick, 46% good games, 8% great, 23% bust. Didn't play after week 14, but it was a pretty good ride. It was high volume. I mean, it worked. Yeah, it was high volume, 220 carries uh, in the first 14 weeks, 39 targets, uh, four touchdowns on the ground, just under 1,000 yards, missed the time with the ankle sprain, was eased in in the beginning of the year. But Damian Pierce had a, a very important role. You got a new head coach over there. What is He's been one of the more difficult players for sure. me to think about for the upcoming year. Just because of the draft capital, could they look for a compliment? Are you in on Damian Pierce after this rookie year and the uh, the breakout? You, I, I would say I'm in from the fit, from the talent perspective. I after everything that happened from in that off season of the the meaty, uh, the meteoric rise of Damian Pierce in the average draft position from like oh hey. You can get a screaming value right now on Damian Pierce. It looks like he might end up the starter to people sort of seeing him. And then where did he end up at like the fourth round or something? It was – which he quickly got to a place where this is a this is a very, very risky draft pick. And it worked. I mean, <laughs> looking at what he did, even missing a month of the season, he paid off. The What you're hoping is that the Texans are – smart in their rebuilding i mean they're they're at the very bottom with the arizona cardinals they have they need a lot uh they need to add a lot of different positions to this team 
hopefully they don't do something stupid like adding a day three running back. They shouldn't. I don't think they will, but it is definitely a concern if Damian Pierce is like is sitting there on your dynasty squad. This is healthy year two James Robinson. This is a player uh, who not not as extreme, but but I get what you're saying. How Cause is he? Because because Damian Pierce because uh, Pierce was drafted. Sure, Robinson I, was a, a completely I'm, undrafted. I'm just saying it's a situation where you've got a rookie who comes in who is so talented. The team has so many needs, and they really should not bring in another running back. Because they should just yes. go forward, and so Damian Pierce to me, if they don't bring in another running back, Damian Pierce, I will, I will draft him happily. I think the offense should be better next season, and he'll he'll return and be a great running back. But because they didn't invest a lot into him, and they have a lot of capital, I'm not I'm not positive that they won't look to replace him. Even though I think most people would look at this situation and say. Your running back's good. Just good. you got a lot of holes. Fill other places. Well, and it could be a veteran signing too. It could be something like that because he was injured. He he did miss the end of the year. You yeah. do probably don't have a rookie quarterback. So, not that Davis Mills and company were setting the world on fire, but they're at least experienced quarterbacks that that, that make plays here or there. And you, the rookie might be better. It it could than what no. they got last oh, year. Oh, it, it could be. Or you could have put Kenny Pickett's rookie year onto that team, and that would. Not work out very well for Mr. Pierce. There were five other rookie running backs that fit that kind of okay, some fantasy impact category. Second rounder was James Cook. Two third rounders in Rashad White and Brian Robinson Jr. And then you had a fifth rounder in Tyler Algier and a yeah, seventh rounder who looks like he has a bright future. Pitter patter, pitter patter. <laughs> in Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, do we have that? Can you find me the Isaiah Pacheco drop? It's very important to me. Thank you. That's. That's All the way to the, the Super Bowl. Uh, I say that's him on the uh, parade. That guy runs hard. Yeah. He runs really, really hard. I think he has a very bright future. Like, if you are looking at those five, who do you think will take the biggest step forward next year? And I'm speaking, of course, about fantasy production, you know? Sure. Being more reliable that would be in that good category, not the okay category. Uh, I mean, P Pacheco, it, it's probably Pacheco if you're putting the odds on it because he – didn't have the opportunity to, to be the guy at the beginning of the year. Clyde Edwards Alaire was having a like people forget people forget it. I'm not saying that you need to remember this for your strategy next year, but Clyde Edwards Alaire was dominating, just dominating for fantasy purposes to start the year, scoring boatloads of touchdowns, then gets hurt, seemingly lost his job. We don't know for sure because he was the you forgot about the not being good at football part for six weeks before the getting hurt. Sure, but I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm saying just reminding. Yeah, people. yeah, no, no. I said lost his job probably. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see in the Super Bowl him activated because that could have at least given us some type of glimpse what this version of the Chiefs would look like. Are they going to put him back into a rotation or not? So if Pacheco is the guy from the beginning, he has the most room to grow. But of these guys. All the arguments are the same for Tyler Algier that we gave for Damian Pierce. Of oh, I agree completely. Of, if he's of, alone there, he could be replaced. But he was he was the dude. Like if you got to watch any Falcons games at the end of the year, he was incredible. He was not a full time starter for the whole year, and yet he still had over a thousand rushing yards. He's not going to catch a ton of passes. He can do it, but it's not likely how Arthur Smith is going to do it. But if they want to continue to establish things and Algier is the guy he could grind it out to being just a real nasty not a high high ceiling guy but just does like a uh uh who's the guy from the Bengals I'm trying to think of P Ryan no uh olden days yeah the older days wow Cedric Benson Bennett. yeah Benson I was oh, gonna say Bennett but, I thought but, you were going Ben no, no. Jarvis Green Ellis that that type of running back as well where it's just he's big enough that you can give him 250 plus carries I've seen he got 210 this year but he could just he can absorb a lot of wear and tear and just and be a gross running back too for you I agree with everything you've said on Pacheco and Algier those are those are two good picks if I had to say whose situation could change like Algier could be replaced we, could. we could see that very easily or at least then bring in an additional and now he's in a timeshare the one guy that I think could go from a timeshare to being the dude would actually be Rashad White because sure, Leonard Fournette, sure. that's a contract they can get out of. And if they do, w with Todd Bowles there, I still think they're going to be in the quarterback market 
as far as looking at Derek Carr, looking at Jimmy Garoppolo, trying to bring in some veteran where they can win now. And if they let Fournette go for cap reasons, then Rashad White could have a much better I, situation. I genuinely see a clean path for all five of those names. Like sure. I see Algier and Pacheco, the arguments that you guys made. And Singletary's a free agent, right? Singletary's a free agent, and James Cook was the highest draft capital of this group and looked good in spurts. You talked about Rashad White, and then Brian Robinson. Like yep. Antonio Gibson could be cut. I mean, they can save two point seven million dollars in the final year of his deal. Oh, that would be. Um, <laughs> and 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 Ron Rivera's on record saying like, I want to run the ball twice as much as I pass it, which we might not enjoy, but Brian Robinson owners will. So. You know, those are the five Man. names that could take a step forward. The Antonio, not, the not relevant names. Oh, yeah. I am curious who you're keeping your eyes on. There's a third round running back in Ty Davis Price. Not him. There's a, yeah, oh, yeah, he, definitely not him. Right. Although his situation, now that I come to think of it, he's Eagles, right? So no, no, no. You're that's no, Sermon. You're oh, that's you're Trey, Trey Sermon. Sermon. Oh my god, that was goodness. their other third round. That was their guy. other third round. Every oh. year they have a third rounder that doesn't get relevant for the next year. Right but now with with Christian McCaffrey there, I mean goodbye. Ty, Ty Davis could be the backup. There's with, four fourth rounders: Zamir White, Isaiah Spiller, Pierre Strong, Hassan Haskins. If Josh Jacobs was to depart the Raiders, Zamir White would have an opportunity. Isaiah Spiller seems uh, fixed back behind not just Eckler but Josh Kelly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pierre Strong, he had a moment in time, but it doesn't seem like he will ever be the guy. He will be one of the guys. Haskins is maybe the most interesting to me <laughs> because uh, Hassan Haskins plays behind Derrick Henry, who's going to be older and should an injury happen again to him. Haskins could have an opportunity that surprises. Did you see anything, though, in the Haskins game that made you – like, I didn't see anything that made me say, oh, man, this is the next man up. Yeah, he just – I mean, he didn't have a whole lot of opportunity on the course of the season, right? He had one game where he played more than 20% of snaps. So I That would be the – that's what I'm talking about. Like, did you see anything that week where no. you were – when because uh, they sat down – they sat down Henry. Yeah, I mean, 12 for 40, it was the Dallas Cowboys, and they were – their their defense was playing extremely well. It was also uh, yeah they played all backups pretty much. It was also right? Malik, right? Malik uh, Willis at quarterback. Oh, I don't remember. I'm fairly certain that that let's, was the yeah, case that, for that I mean, one that, week. I think that's a fair question to ask because it. Let's go week seventeen. What? No, no, that would nope, have been that would have been moved to Dobbs. the guy that I already forgot his name. Dobbs. <laughs> Josh yes, Dobbs. Thank you. <laughs> uh, fresh off of the. The the what Detroit practice squad. You guys want to talk about some wideouts? Yeah, yeah. that's. Oh yeah, here this, we go. Oh, this finally. is the year. Okay. We've got some names. Garrett Wilson, tenth pick overall, thirty five percent good, forty seven percent bust, eighteen percent great. He must have been uh, terrible. He was great when he was the only Wilson on the field. Well, well said. <laughs> Well said. Okay. There's only room for one Wilson on this New York team. Yeah, his his splits with Flacco and White, 11 targets a game, six receptions a game. 14 yeah. fantasy points a game. Yeah, and he, he you know, I, I said it on the last what show. What was Zach doing? Just throw the ball to Garrett Wilson, man. Well, it's the throwing the ball part that really <laughs> slowed him down. I'm just saying. Six, you say just throw the ball to him. Six. It's more of a calculus thing for Zach. Right. Because six targets versus eleven. Throw the ball. Just throw it at Garrett Wilson. It's tough because when you snap the ball, a lot of times quarterbacks look to throw it, and a lot of times quarterbacks look to run backwards, and that's more what Zach Wilson was really enjoying. Doing. Back into oh, the right. Back, Back into, into the, the right. right. Run, 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 run. Throw the ball out of bounds. Play it safe. Um, Garrett Wilson had the most targets by a rookie wide receiver since Bolden. In 2003, he is the guy. You just need stability at the position, and you're going to get really, really good production. He finished a wide receiver 19 despite his um, Wilson issues. Yeah, I mean, he, he's the dude. There's no fear. you got to find out who his quarterback is next year. If it is anyone half decent, Garrett Wilson, I, I'm a little terrified of how high he's going to be drafted. Like, he, you know, he's, he's probably going to be a top 10 drafted wide receiver next year. Chris Olave was the 11th pick overall to the Saints through the first nine weeks. You were getting to the point where you felt like you could, you could start Olave every single week. You look forward it, or you looked forward to it, <laughs> and, uh, and and then it kind of slowed down. I mean, he had no 
uh, games that were in our great category, 40% good, 33% bust. But you saw with your eyeballs. I mean, oh, yeah. you, knew, you knew that Chris Olave was – uh, the future of the position for the Saints early on, and this was a, you know, this was the wide receiver room. You were worried about Landry and Michael Thomas and other options, and then all of a sudden it was just Olave. And break like actually break down the numbers. So Garrett Wilson played 17 games, 147 targets, and his final line was 83 for 1100 yards and four touchdowns. Chris Olave in 15 games, so we have two fewer games, 119 targets, so. Fewer on the targets, get 72 for 1,042 and four. I mean, statistically, just right behind Garrett Wilson, yet two fewer games and, what, like 28 fewer targets or so. You, For someone like myself who had him on your roster, what was frustrating in the second half is you didn't get any of the big plays. In the first half of the season, he was a big play magnet. It was yep. a – James Winston would take a shot down the field – and he, if you pull in one of those, your day is made in a way. So in the second half of the year, it was much more difficult to count on him. The offense was really, really bad. But everything you saw on film, the ability to produce, you, you got enough of it from Olave, just like with Wilson, where you know the future is bright. Yeah, I just, I'm bringing it up to be like uh, Olave and Garrett Wilson, are they're right next to each other. For are me. they both ahead of this next guy to you who, like Christian Ooh. Watson is a polarizing uh, player, I think we all know he has tremendous talent. We don't know if Aaron Rodgers will be his quarterback. His stretch of elite play, it was this four-game span where he scored, I think, 600 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then after that, and obviously before it, it wasn't, you know, he was dealing with injuries before it and, you know, couldn't really get out of his own way. Couldn't get back on the field without re-injuring himself. Had some dud games in weeks 15, 16, 17. Those had to have hurt for fantasy players. Well, remember, he got injured in week 16, yeah. only played 38% of the snaps, and then the following game was still dealing with that. So um, this really was a, a season where he was either injured or when you saw him on the field, he flashed. He showed elite speed, size, speed, freak. I mean, you just do a little crossing route or you you know run him like the first play of the season just down on a nine route, and he will beat whoever – is the defender there as far as in, in, in just a foot race? I feel like I'm going to be in on let, Christian Watson. Let me sound year. one alarm on Christian Watson, only because we have a, a, a cast of characters he's a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, rookie wide receivers with seven-plus receiving touchdowns on fewer than 45 receptions. Here are the names, because I think it's, it's almost indicative of what kind of outlier type of touchdown numbers they are. Martavis Bryant, who... Oh, Size, man. speed, freak, right? Big play, freak. What could have been? What could have been? Gabe Davis, big play. What could have been? What could have been? <laughs> Jahan Dotson. What could oh, be? No, eh, what could yeah, be? What could be? And Anthony Miller. Uh, yeah. yeah. What was? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, you can mention Romeo Dobbs in this conversation, too. Very talented player. Definitely more of a possession receiver, I think, than what Watson is. I wonder if next year, if Rodgers is back, if we're looking at both those players saying, you know, what What do you need to add to your fantasy roster? Do you need to add big playability? It's not that Dobbs can't do that, but Watson had more than twice as many touchdowns. Um, or do you need more of the possession guy? Like, do you do you view the gap between those two as large? Yes, I do. Okay. I yeah, I mean... Christian Watson by a lot. Yeah, the obviously, whether or not Aaron Rodgers is there is a gigantic facet in whether he can score enough touchdowns to be a hyper productive fantasy player, or the I, next Deontay Johnson with some other quarterback. Yeah, and I, I I do put the odds very very minute that Aaron Rodgers is back for the Packers. I, I would I would say it's you know twenty five percent chance that he plays there because if he comes out of his darkness retreat and decides he's not retiring, <laughs> he wants to play. Then what if he doesn't make it out? Well, sure. So then he's not part of the Packers. How does one find the door? In mm. absolute darkness. Yeah. How like how they find it? How big themselves. is this? How big is the lodge? <laughs> how big is the room? I uh, that's a good question. Because if it's too big, you will have trouble. Do you? But do you want it bigger? Like if if it's pure dark, do you still want to be able to you know stretch out? I think the do some I think you're right. I think the shaman turns the lights on at the end. Oh. Ah, my <laughs> eyes! Uh, how does it make you feel as a Packer fan, Al? That. Uh, Aaron Rodgers might have played his last snap. Like, is that what you believe? I do. Yeah, and I think it. Is it it's time? time? Is it time? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
It's also got to be what you want. Do you have to then go on a darkness retreat to recover from, a, you know, to move on from this era? I, I'm going to see the results from Aaron's. See, see okay. whether it does for him, and then I'll assess if they, I want to do that or not. The Pat, they got a first round quarterback just chilling, waiting to go play. And if they can get a couple number ones from Rogers' end of his career, that's great. That's fair. Uh, a couple other names here that are uh, that were contributors: Drake London. Oh, Drake London. You still in love, Mike? So Drake London's season was uh, okay. 29% good, 6% great, 53% en bust. Enough to know that he's he's going to be a dude in the NFL. Like he's he is going to be a player. But the way that it unraveled of you drafted and I'm sure many people had the experience that that Kyle and myself had where you drafted Drake London late, you have 3 weeks of more of just like of of fantasy relevance and it's like holy crap, we we did it. What, we got this rookie receiver. He's ready to go. He's going to be a part of this, uh, part of my fantasy lineup. And then you just, he just kept destroying you week after week after week after week until you finally bail on him. And then signs of life finally happen again at the end. Are you just living the Kyle Pitts life in a different name yes. with Drake London? He is the Kyle Pitts of, I want to say the Falcons, but <laughs> it doesn't work. No, because Kyle Pitts is the Kyle you Pitts could say of the, the Kyle Falcons. Pits of the wide receiver yeah, room that'll work uh it's unbelievable to think he had the the highest you know target share among all rookie wide receivers since 2014 and he is a dominant player so yeah. you would assume that his fantasy finish would have been much better than it was but you really can't discount 72 for 866 in a rookie he, season that's still a very good rookie season good. he looked good he looked like a guy as like mike yeah. said george pickens 47% wow, bust, 35% good, 0% great. Definitely flashed often. Um, seventh most deep targets in the NFL. Average depth of target of 15.6, which was saying something for this team. He makes highlight catches. Uh, yeah, he made mistakes too. I mean, there was it was very up and down. You could never know when you could play him, but 800 yards in, as a rookie. Sure. Four touchdowns and probably a lot more opportunity in his future. I, I really wish he showed more when Chase Claypool left. I was very disappointed. It looked like he was on his way to having a rookie breakout season. They ship off uh, Claypool, and he doesn't really step up much. His, his numbers didn't change, and so now what you're hoping for is just – you know, a year two step forward from him and a year two step forward from the quarterback certainly showed enough that he can get it done. But I do believe his hype is a little overblown by highlights. Ver you know what I mean? It's like if you go up and moss a dude and you get a little bit more pub, you're all over Twitter for that great play. You know, it seems better than what you saw in Drake London, where he's just trying to get a catchable ball and, um, you know, ho hum. So I, I feel like Pickens will be probably overdrafted. Between, well, you, go ahead, Mike. Between Watson, Drake London, and George Pickens, who would you be trying to trade for in Dynasty right now? Drake London. By I mean, Drake okay. London is the man that I would try to trade for because I think his value, it, it's possible in certain leagues he has the least value. Uh, I mean, it, you could put these guys in any order in different leagues, but I do think he has the highest outcome as far as being a 150 target alpha wide receiver one for his team uh, for many years. And I think both of these next two names are targets as well. Jahan Dotson, who missed a, a good amount of time, still put up, you know, over 500 yards, seven touchdowns, uh, looked to the part. Jahan Dotson, wide receiver for the commanders. And then Traylon Burks, who missed a lot of time with injury as well, but had 444 yards, a touchdown. Uh, he was targeted on 21% of his routes. The offense was a mess in Tennessee, and we don't know what that future's like either. I mean, both of these guys, Burks and Dotson, could have different quarterbacks throwing them the football than they saw last year. This was a really good wide receiver draft class. I don't think anybody came out and, and disappointed. People came out and got injured. You know, Christian Watson, uh, obviously Jamison Williams didn't play, Traylon Burks, Jahan Dotson, they missed time, and they weren't on the field as much as you want. But really, there wasn't. I don't feel like there I was think a there player. Were two, there were two that fit that category that, that were me. on there, and you saw him, and you're just like, man, he stinks. The, Sky Moore, Sky Moore, and then the other one would be David Bell, who never earned his oh, way. Oh, sure. Who never really earned his way under the field over the course of a year, but was never really hurt. He was a little less hyped by the time that the 
the final you know season started uh, versus some of these other guys. I, I agree, and Jalen Tolbert too. I mean, that was somebody that we thought without Michael Gallup, you'd be yeah, like, ah, is he gonna, you know, those guys didn't earn their spots, but you know, Jamison Williams, Wandale Robinson. Those are two names that you need to pay attention to moving forward, along with Alec Pierce, I think, in Indianapolis. And and I am interested to see a name we probably didn't talk about at all this last year, John Mechie. Sure. A uh, rookie who was drafted to the Houston Texans, unfortunately had cancer, missed this season. I have not heard an update, but he looked like a, a good player coming into the league, so hopefully he has a future. Yeah, there's, there's a couple other names. I think Khalil Shakir in Buffalo fifth rounder he kind of did everything that was asked of him he just wasn't asked to do a lot Tyquan Thornton had some flashes for New England that they could be losing Jacoby Myers Tyquan Thornton could have a bigger role next year sure and that offense you know if if they get you know if if they get their way it might finally throw the football down the field a little bit um and Rashid Shahid sure made some uh <laughs> made some some big plays for the Saints and they could be losing what Thomas and Landry. So, Rick, they already lost them. <laughs> They're already gone. I mean, they were gone this whole year. Rookie tight ends, not much. Some fantasy impact from Dulcich and uh, my boy Chiga Conquo. He looks He's great. your boy now. I yeah. You, 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 you. What do you mean? I, do you I, mean I get, I get it's, that. It's, it's I get boy. that it's his boy okay. because he had him I called as a the start. He called him as a start of the week on the week that he broke out. So that yeah. was a, that was a very okay. nice call. That's fair. But all three of us do really like him. He looked talented, and and going forward, he's certainly a name to to monitor. Do I need to claim early my guy? Yeah, for sure. sure. Better put it on yeah. the board. No, no, th no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. No, Dulcich. I think you know stability with the offense in Denver. He's going to have a big role. I think we saw an, enough games where you said, this is a good rookie season, but it's a rookie tight end. Counting on him, can't do it. But um, I, don't, I don't know. I think he has a future of fantasy relevance. What, then what about Trey McBride? Arizona Cardinals, first tight end drafted. Yeah, I mean, he'll be, he'll be uh, a decent target monster at the tight end position for Arizona. Do you agree? I do agree. Uh, Zach Ertz has a bad knee injury in a timeline where he might not be back um, to start the season. At the very end of the year, you finally had proof of life from Trey McBride, who was easily far and away the number one uh, tight end in ADP as far as fantasy drafts going into the season for rookies. Um, in the NFL draft, obviously, was taken first. He He's a very talented guy who wasn't on the field much till the very end. Now it seems like they're going to need him. You could have Hopkins leave. You could have Ertz not ready. And Trey McBride, you know, at the end of your drafts, probably going undrafted next year, you could scoop him up and end up with, you know, a second-year breakout. And then uh, I'm going to mention some names that had big games at times this year, but I think it's it's scheme-dependent. Like, you, you get them in the right scheme. Jay Lonnie Woods in Indianapolis, physical force. Uh Daniel Bellinger led the Giants in red zone yep. targets, He's missed some time. Isaiah Likely was a great complement uh, and even primary target at times when Mark Andrews was out, and I think that's the end of my list. Uh, you, Kate Otten? Eh. What? Was Brady there? <laughs> uh, okay. But second most routes run for a rookie tight end since 2013. Six most routes among all tight ends. That That's not Tom Brady. That's That's the scheme. I, I think Kate Otten is interesting. Yeah, I mean, most tight ends, and by most I mean darn near all of them, are dependent upon their situation to have good games, and I don't view his situation as good. You know, it's like Dalton Schultz. We've talked about him. If he goes, takes a big contract somewhere else, whatever. Right now he's with a quarterback that's throwing him the ball a lot, and he can have a lot of fantasy relevance. If Kate Otten, you know, has someone come in that's – not I, a great quarterback, then I'm meh. I think I, in in general there are categories of tight ends, right? There are those that are athletic enough to where you could foresee a great breakout in that category. Like Dulcich, to me, you saw super hyper-athletic plays, you know, Kittle breakaway runs, those type of things. Chica Conquo was certainly in that category. Jelani Woods with the physical size. And then you have kind of, I would say, pass catchers, right? The, the, the Witten-esque. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where that's Otten fine. and Bellinger, I think, fit in um into that mix so yeah i think it's just kind of what you're looking at at tight end and if you take a chance on one of these guys next year what are you expecting what are you hoping for
Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 I mean, 65 targets as a rookie. But he, I mean, I, I, not, I don't want to take that away from him. It's just that Brady broke the like passing attempts record, right? Last year? Yes. Did so it? so he it's broke like, his own record. it's just one of those things where there's so much unknown there. I don't know if Kate Otten comes out and he catches 60 balls or 22. Like, I just don't know what that system's going to look like. Um, they missed Cameron Ray for the majority of the year, right? In yeah, Tampa. But, but it's, there's no way he's back, is there? I don't know, Mike. I don't know. <laughs> you you have more Otten confidence than my, uh, than Jason. So Cameron Brait would be he is under wow he's just under contract forever. Uh, he would be. <laughs> I a, didn't know he's a free agent. So it's a K, no he's a Cameron Brait three million dead cap if they cut him. Okay. So he'll probably be back. All right. Well, we are going to be back as well next week on the Fantasy Footballers. That sounded like a tease to like a crime show yeah um that's it though find out who done it next week and a uh, quick reminder from the top of the show if you're still hanging around uh we are hiring a social media specialist with digital marketing experience the fantasyfootballers.com slash careers so um you know go impress jason yeah i'm hard to impress with this polo shirt <laughs> you must have got that from brooks Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.